dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, it is 6.02. I'm Will Puckett. And I'm Madison Pergram. Well, thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. And Madison, we've said it all morning long, but you say it's cold, I say it's pretty chilly, chilly, but we both say it's more than welcome. It is, yes. I'm enjoying it. We've been asking for mm -hmm. it, and it's here, so... Okay, putting those sweaters on, those coats. Embrace the day. Let's bring in meteorologist Kelly McShane <laughs> to give us a breakdown of what we should expect on this Monday. Kelly, good morning. Good morning, Will. Good morning, Madison. We are waking up a little bit on the chilly side, but like Madison said, it is what we've been waiting for. So overall, it is a little bit of a chilly start. So grab the jacket. We're looking at 30s and 40s waking up to start our Monday. A little bit cooler in those valleys. That's where we're seeing those 30 degree temperatures. So just be very, uh, just be sure to grab that jacket as you head out the door. Satellite and radar is showing clear skies and that's why that heat was allowed to escape so quickly getting our temperatures down into the 30s and 40s for this morning and a little bit of fog is settling into the region. You can see that here on our WYMT studio camera here in Hazard and throughout the entire region where it's mainly looking towards the south and east into Harlan and Bell counties but throughout the valleys in eastern Kentucky you may be seeing that fog this morning so just take it easy on the roads this morning and like I said don't forget that jacket this morning temperatures though this afternoon going to be feeling nice I'll have those details in just a little bit guys thank you Kelly well one Pineville home caught fire Sunday evening soon after it set flames to near neighboring homes well since the call crews have been working around the clock to put those fires out WYMT's Hannah Reynolds is in Pineville with the latest Officials, including police, firefighters, and emergency management, have been on scene here on Tennessee Avenue since around 1030 on Sunday night when dispatch got a call saying that there could be a house fire with entrapments. One home caught fire, and as firefighters were trying to contain it, flames spread to neighboring homes on each side. Police say there were no people inside the homes by the time they got there within a matter of a few minutes, and thankfully, nobody was injured. Neighbors say they were distraught when they walked outside as first responders arrived on scene to see the homes on fire. I felt, um, I mean, I, I, was, I was sad because it could have been me. It could have been us. You know, I mean, and I just, I hate it for the families. I really do. Thankfully, police say there have been no injuries reported from the house fires. For now, in Bell County, Hannah Reynolds, WYMT Mountain News. Now, we do not know what caused the fire just yet, but we will have updates to this story on our website at WYMT.com as we get more information. Well, speaking of fire departments, another one is looking for help. The Winchester Professional Firefighters Association is combating staffing shortages. The city of Winchester alone has 12 empty positions. They are too short staffed to operate Fire Engine 3, a $1 million truck sitting there not being used. The members of the fire department are nervous about this shortage. That also kind of puts me on edge, knowing that there's an apparatus that won't be responding to calls that could easily be one of my, my family members. They are asking city and county leaders to work with them to ramp up recruiting and offer competitive pay. And a 10 year old girl in Ohio who uses a wheelchair got this special Halloween costume from the national nonprofit Magic Wheelchair. This is Navia, and you, as you can see, this year she'll be dressing up as Vanellope Von Schweetz from the movie Racket Ralph. The organi organization teamed up with Middletown Police and city workers to make the big reveal yesterday. It happened during the Hocus Pocus Family Fun Festival. This comes ahead of the Middletown's Candy with a Cop planned for October 28th. City and Employees, officers, and AK Steel volunteers will deliver candy to kids with disabilities. The Louisville Iron Man was special for the police department. Louisville Metro Police Officer Demetrius Latham competed in the competition yesterday, honoring his friend and late detective Deidre Mengado. She was killed on duty on Christmas Eve. These photos were posted to the department's Facebook page. The post said Officer Latham was inspired by Mengado who told him, quote, you shouldn't let anything stop you, end quote. And the Louisville Ironman event was shortened due to algae. One third of the triathlon was canceled due to algae in the Ohio River. But one out of, 
out of town or decided to compete the first leg of the triathlon anyway. Carrie Nader found the lake at Progress Park to complete her laps. She then went to Waterfront Park to officially start the race. She said she used to be 270 pounds and had trained for years for this moment. She was not missing the first leg. I am no more special than any other athlete here. When we found out that this swim was canceled, there's so many emotions. Um, people are devastated. People are crying. People are, you know, should I do a different race? And everybody has to make up their mind personally of what's important to them, how they want to achieve their goals. And um, everybody here is absolutely amazing. And she gave all the credit to those around her supporting her. Well, doctors are urging people to head to the doctor for flu shots. Doctors are looking to Australia, whose flu season is during our summer. They were hit hard this year, and the season lasted longer. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention recommends everyone be vaccinated before the end of October. They also recommend everyone who is more than six months old to get the shot. And officials with the West Virginia Department of Education say teachers are missing more days of school. New data shows more than half of the state's teachers missed more than 10 days of school last year. The state superintendent of education, Steve Payne, says teachers have a hard and stressful job, but some are missing too much. 11% of teachers missed almost 20 days. A bill passed a few months ago, including a $500 attendance bonus to teachers missing less than four days. Also in West Virginia, hemp farmers have more than quadrupled their crop. The Mountain State is one of the few granted early legislation for hemp production. About 130 farmers grew more than 600 acres of industrial hemp this year. The profit from hemp is greater than any other cash crop in the state. More than 400 applications have been submitted this for next year. This is nearly double from last year. And a broadband expansion coming to tens of thousands of homes in southwest Virginia. The Federal Communications Commission is spending $24 million over the next decade to expand broadband internet access. It will impact 70,000 homes, and the provider Sunset Digital Communications will start receiving funding this month. Six counties are being targeted, including Lee and Wise, Virginia. And you may have seen a notice on your weather app saying unhealthy air quality for sensitive groups. This alert was not from the National Weather Service, but a reminder that the changing of seasons can be challenging. A large number of pollutants can be hard for those with asthma or other respiratory issues. Doctors say to make sure to take medications to help with seasonal allergies. We have changes in weather like this. You know, we had some rain recently. Now we've got a lot colder weather. We can have a couple of things happen. One being uh, the potential for an inversion or, or temperatures that are holding some of the pollutants and, and things that uh, our houses and cars and um, everything else release holds it closer to the ground. If allergy symptoms are not controlled, they can lead to infections such as sinus and ear. And the wildfires continue to rip through California. The Los Angeles County Fire Department says the wildfire in the San Fernando Valley is now 33% contained. They say the winds and temperatures have fallen to normal levels. The fire in Riverside County is 68% contained and hundreds of structures have been destroyed. Three people have been confirmed dead and more than 100,000 people have been evacuated. Japan is in recovery mode after a powerful typhoon called Hagabis slashed the country's northeast region. The storm's record-setting rain caused significant damage and left at least 31 people dead. The government says this storm could be the strongest to hit the area since 1958. It brought record-breaking rainfall to many areas. One area got 37 inches of rain within 24 hours. Temperatures as we wake up on this Monday morning, definitely a chilly start to the day. We're seeing some 30s out there in those valley regions, 39 into Williamsburg, 36 in Somerset. Monticello now down to 35. Check it out in Jonesville. They are at the freezing point this morning, 32. But on top of those ridges, we're looking at temperatures a little bit warmer into the 40s, but still pretty chilly out there. So be sure to grab the warm jacket as you head out the door and a little bit of fog is settling in because we do have those clear skies, especially into Harlan and Bell counties and the valley regions throughout the region. So just be very careful this morning. But by the time we get to this afternoon, temperature is going to be very comfortable with plenty of sunshine. I'll have details on what we can expect for the rest of the week here in a little bit, guys.
Thank you, Kelly, and thank you for joining Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Last night, one person was taken to the hospital after shots were fired at a mall in Florida. And rescue crews in New Orleans are still searching for a missing worker after a hotel under construction collapsed.